Welcome everyone to another episode of Coaching in Session. My name is Michael Reardon and I'm a mindset coach here in the Austin, Texas metro area. What I do as a mindset coach is I help people with their minds and to overcome any limiting beliefs they may have and to start to live in abundance. This podcast, this video cast was created to help the 80%. Right, the people who are not aware of their potential, who don't even understand that the life they're living can be better. So, for those people, this podcast was created for you in mind specifically for you to wake up, right? To no longer accept the norm of how you're living and say, you know what, I want more. And then you go out and get it. So, this podcast is going to have topics but it is run by your questions. So feel free to ask all the questions in chat. If you are watching this on YouTube or on Twitch, when the live stream is not active, feel free to email me at coachinginsession at gmail.com and to email me your questions and I will get to them either on the next live or the live after that. Right. So so you so your list of questions will be answered. I will also shout you out. So if you are a frequent guest, you'll get a shout out every single time. If you're a new guest, you get a shout out every single time. The point is to say, all right, this person is going after it. Right. Because we're all starting a race right now. Right. There's no winners to this race. Right now, we're all trying to get better. We're all trying to reach the next level, right? So we all start at the same starting line. The finish line is a ways away. We have time to understand, okay, right now I'm with everyone. Because when someone's ahead of you, your mind starts to play games. Your mind says, you know what? I'm not going to be able to catch up to them. So I'm going to stop. Think of if I told you, you can make a million dollars tomorrow. Yeah, if you just do this, this and that, you can make a million dollars. How many of you would believe me? Right? Probably most of you would think I'm full of BS. And I and I would hope you would know that. You have to do the work in order to attain that million. Right? So many people are so quick, give me the million, but I don't want to do the work. And this video cast, this video series is created to show you how to do the work, right? To implement what is needed in your mind, in your habits, in your days, to say, hey, this is what I need to do in order to be successful. Mondays are going to be very special. Mondays are when my blogs release. You can find my blogs at revenconcepts.com and you can catch the latest blog. It releases at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time every Monday. Today's topic is going to be something that's not really talked about frequently. I very rarely hear about this topic, and it's called the prize of life. We're going to be talking and really focusing on what is the prize of life? What does that mean to you? Are you going through life? You're just doing it on your own you know, volition. You're just saying, okay, well, I'm going to go to work. I don't have to get paid. You don't have to you don't have to give me a paycheck. I don't need money to pay my bills or go on vacation, right? There is a reason why you go to work. What is that reason? From that reason, maybe your reason is I have to eat. Maybe your reason is I have to provide for my family. Maybe that reason is I want to buy a Lamborghini. Right? Doesn't matter what your reason is, but there's a goal. There's a purpose behind your actions. So the prize of life is what you're going after. How do you want the end to look? There is a wonderful author. He's uh, like a motivational type person. Uh, Stephen Covey, right? If you ever read, I think he was uh, the seven habits of highly successful people or 21 habits of highly successful people. And he wrote a book about it. And he was saying, begin with the end in mind. 
So that doesn't mean, okay, where do I start is where will I be when I finish? So that type of thinking changes the way you operate. Because now that you have a goal, you have a destination, you can say to yourself, all right, I need to do this in order to get to where I need to be. Because if you want to lose weight, for example, right, let's say you want to lose 20 pounds. How do you lose 20 pounds? Calorie deficit, right? Your body needs a certain amount of calories to maintain its current weight. If you do not eat enough calories, you are in a deficit. That means your body cannot maintain the weight you have. So you're going to start losing weight. So in order to lose 20 pounds, you need to be in a calorie deficit long enough for those 20 pounds to fall off. Now, if you put that into your, in your life and toward your goals, I want to be this type of person, right? Maybe you want to be CEO of a big tech company, right? You want to be the new Google, the new Amazon, the new Tesla. You can do that, right? But that's where you want to be, right? What's the steps needed to get there? And the easiest way to do that is to look at people who have already done it, right? So if you want to do what um, Elon Musk did, figure out what he did first, right? These people who are so successful, guess what they do? They say 10, 20 years later, when they are successful, right? Because it was a journey for them. He just didn't create Tesla and Tesla boomed. You know, um, Jeff Bezos didn't create Amazon and Amazon boomed. It was a process, right? Amazon started in a garage. Elon Musk started in a garage with PayPal. It doesn't matter where you start. It matters where you finish. So if you're going to be that top 1%, 5%, 10%, you have to do the work to get there. So the blog is talking about the prize of life. And when we talk about this blog, I'm going over to our website or my website, the prize of life we can see that the price of life is talking about where do we want to be? What are the dreams we hold? What is society telling us? All the things that make us think where our future is going to end up. And oftentimes people are given a dream. They're given a goal and they go after it. And that's all they know. So down the road, they're 30 years old, 40 years old, and they're not fulfilled yet. They're unhappy with how their life is going, and they're not excited to go into work anymore. They're not excited for what's coming next. Every day is just another day, and it's another mundane day, and they're not happy. They did everything they were told. Be a good student. Work hard. Get good grades. And then you will be successful. If you're lucky. If you're lucky. I find it hard to believe that luck has to play a role into your success. It shouldn't. Your success should not be derived by how lucky you are. You should be successful because you put in the work. You should be successful because you deserve that success. You should win the prize because you are number one. You did the work needed to be number one. You weren't hoping to be number one. You weren't dreaming to be number one. You were pushing. You were doing the work 
need it to be number one. But the dreams that we were given, they weren't created to make us number one. Those dreams were created to keep us below the 20, below the top 20%, right? That means that, that means we fall on the bottom 80%. And you might be happy, you know, being the top 30%, right? You're top 40%. You're like, well, I'm top 40%. At least I'm not, you know, below, you know, 50 mark. You can think that, right? And it's, and it's not wrong to think that. Some people don't want to be successful. Some people want to go through life with as little struggle, with as little challenge as possible. They take what life gives them and they're satisfied. I got this. I got a little bit of this. I can eat. I can go out. I'm good. What happens if you want more though? What happens if you're not satisfied with the dreams that you were told. You can have a house, kids, dog, cat, and you can work until you're 65 and every year up until 65, you'll get two weeks off. You can go to Disneyland or if you wanted to go on a cruise, you can do that. But what happened if you wanted to travel the world? And you started working when you were, let's say, 20. You have 45 trips. If you spend two weeks every single year at your location. So that means you can go to 45 places before you die. But you love traveling. So how are you going to accomplish your goal of traveling the world if you can only go to 45 places because the American dream the dream you were given is telling you that you need to work a nine to five. And that nine to five is going to be so tiring and so grueling. When you get home, you're going to be too tired. So you're going to sit on the sofa and you're going to relax because the next day you got to go to work and you're going to hate Mondays and you're going to wait for Fridays. And as soon as Fridays come, you're going to say, Oh my goodness, I, I can't believe it's Friday. I'm so happy. Payday. In the weekend. So Saturday, you're delighted. You're like, Ooh, I don't got to go to work. What can I do? Some people might travel, do a day trip, a weekend trip. But those are typically a little bit demanding. They're tiring. And guess what people don't want to be on Monday? Tired. So they say, you know what? I'm just going to stay and I'm going to relax. I'm not going, I'm not going to do too much. So you waste your weekend away relaxing, recovering for another week of work, a nine to five week of work. There's a pattern to that. You're in a rat race and you might have enough money to pay your bills and more. We're not talking about that type of rat race. We're not talking about the money rat race. We're talking about the life rat race. Where would that leave you, right? Yeah. You might have enough money to retire and you might have enough money to, you know, send your kids to college and not have to worry about what bills need to be paid this month and what can be, you know, put off until next month because you don't have enough. You don't have to worry about your fridge being filled. So when that happens and you're in that rat race of life, waiting for the weekend, waiting for your vacation time, waiting for your next vacation or the idea of just being free, whether that be retirement or maybe a sick day. It doesn't matter what you're going after. What matters is how you want to feel at the end of the day. Are you happy? Are you content with what you were given? This dream. For me, no, I don't want that. I don't want that dream. I want better. I want a bigger dream. Here in America, you can, your dream can be as big as you want it to be. And your dream should scare you because if they don't, they're not big enough. 
Start to think about what you want and write it down. I want this by the end of my life and make sure it is not attainable right now. Because if it is, it's not grand enough. It needs to be able to scare the daylights out of you. Like, I don't know if I can do this. That type of goal, that type of ambition, because what you're going to notice on that road, you're going to be getting stronger. You're going to be gaining new skills, assets, meeting people along the way that are going to help realize your dream. Just like all these highly successful people of our current generation, they have people who had helped them build their empire. And if you talk to these people, they say the trick is to find people that are smarter than you. So they're not even saying that they're the smartest person, right? Talk about a humble piece of pie. They're saying that there are people smarter than they are working for them. So who's really smarter? The person who's getting a salary or the person who can determine how much they get paid every single year. Most people want to be CEOs. Most people want to be very high earners, but they do not even know what they want in five years. When I speak with clients, I ask them, I say, well, what do you want to do in one year, five years, 10 years? And they usually say, well, I really haven't thought about that. I thought I was just going to work and go on vacation when I can and, you know, maybe start a family. That, that's it. There is no grand dreams. Where are our dreams? Why was our imagination and our sense of wonder stripped from us? And the reason why is because of the school system. And I'm not sure about other parts of the world, but in Western civilization over here, especially in America, the school system is very structured. But the school system wasn't built for students. It was built to create workers. Workers to do a nine to five. Why don't you think schools teach accounting, how to balance your checkbook? They don't teach basic, basic finance, um, home economics, right? Washing clothes, washing dishes. They teach English, math, writing, history, science, send you off into the world, learn your trade learn your craft, learn your career, good luck. That's what, that's what the school system does. And even when the teachers would try to say, you know what, I'm going to make this fun. And some teachers accomplish it, right? They have the ability, they have the ability to do that, whether it is because they're tenured or they are well known in the district And the teachers are, and some some teachers are able to do that. But new teachers, right, growing up with this new, new generation, and they have all these wonderful ideas, and they have all these things they want to try, and they want to be like their favorite teacher that they remember, only to realize that their hands are tied behind their back. They have to teach this by this time. And the, and the students better be 80% or 90% proficient in this task, right? In this learning. So we take away their imagination. We tell them not to talk. Raise your hand if we want you to say something to answer a question. But other than that, shut up and listen. Yeah, you can have an opinion, 
but I have the answers right here. And if your answer is not correct, it is wrong. And we wonder why so many students, so many young minds are growing up into a world where they're unhappy, where they're contemplating to not work hard. They are fed up by the point they hit middle school. They're done. So what I find is they don't have anything to look forward to besides, well, I, when I'm an adult, I can do what I want. But what does that mean? It means that they have, they have to follow the dream either that they gave themselves, if they still have one, if it wasn't beat out of them. Because that's what happens oftentimes. Parents, teachers, adults in general will tell someone that they can't do something. You can't do this, Billy. You can't do this, Becky. You're not smart enough. You're not tall enough. You're good at this area. You should do something, you know, with cooking. You should do something with history. You should be a teacher. You should be a writer. And I'm not saying that every teacher is bad. There are some wonderful teachers. I know personally many wonderful teachers, but it only takes one bad apple. You hear that a lot nowadays. It only takes one bad apple to ruin the whole bunch. And if one teacher can get their hands on a student, not physically, but their minds and tell them something that's negative, that's not productive, that's not going to benefit them in some way and serve them toward their success, guess what? They're going to have a really tough time getting out of that. They're going to have a really tough time saying, you know what? I don't care what Mr. So-and-so said about me. I'm going to do what I want. I don't care what Mrs. So-and-so said about me. I'm still going to be successful. Because even in my adult life, I had people who are adults older than me, people who should have been my mentors telling me, you will never be successful. You won't succeed. And that's fine with me. Tell me all you want. Because then it allows me, it gives me fuel, gives me motivation to say, you know what? I don't want to prove you wrong. I want to prove me right. I'm not interested in saying I did it and you said I couldn't do it. I'm more interested in succeeding and knowing that no matter what someone tells me, I'm going to accomplish what I set out to achieve. So that's what the prize of life is. The prize of life is what you want out of life. And you have to label that prize. You have to tell yourself, this is what I want. And then you have to solidify it. You have to write it down. Because if you're going to keep your ideas in your mind, your ideas are going to keep on evolving and changing. And I'm not saying your ideas can't evolve and can't change. But you should write your ideas down. And if your direction changes, if your path changes, that's fine. At least you still have directive. At least you still have the direction you want to go into. Most people don't even have their goals written down. Maybe you're one of them. Maybe you know someone who doesn't have any goals for themselves. You ask what they're going to do tomorrow and they say, I don't know. What do you want to do? So what do you do? You can't be a follower anymore. We know that doesn't work. Because if you're a follower, you're going to be following someone, but not following your own dreams. You'll be following theirs, their ambitions. So how's that going to get you to the life you want? You have to be a leader, right? You have to decide, this is what I want. And then you go out and get it. The growth that you have in mind for yourself can only be achieved by you. Yeah, you can tell your partner, you can tell your friends, you can tell your colleagues, all the wonderful things that you want to accomplish. But what I find works best is to write it down and don't tell anyone what you're going to do. You just do it. And when people start looking at you and they say, why are you wasting your time doing this? Why are you doing this? You'll never be successful. You keep doing it, especially if that's your passion. If that's something you're adamant about that you want to achieve, you keep doing it. 
And when you achieve, you can look at that person, just give them a smile. I guarantee you that smile is going to feel amazing. Yeah, because I've done it. Someone told me I couldn't do something. They said, this person's no good. This person won't surmount to anything. Don't even waste your time. And I was a teacher at this time. And I said, oh, okay, not a problem. I listened, but I ignored also. And I did exactly what I was going to do. I was going to teach. And I taught this student. And the student succeeded. What would have happened if that person told me, don't even bother. They can't surmount to anything. Don't even bother. You're wasting your time. I'm trying to help you out. I don't want to waste your time because I wasted my time. So don't waste your time on this person. What happened if every other person gave up on that person or on that student? Where would that student be today? Would that student be successful? Would that student have a mindset that they're not good enough? That they're inadequate? Or would they say to themselves, you know what? I appreciate all the teachers who put in hard work and effort toward my success. And the fact that I am now successful shows me there's going to be two types of people in this world. People who say you can't do something and people who say you can. So if you're going to be the type of person who wants to achieve something in their life, you have to make sure you surround yourself with people who tell you that you can, people who lift you up, people who light that fire right underneath you, that they're, they're, they're embers in your life. They light you up because those are the people you need. You don't need friends to take you to parties and get you girls and take you to the VIP section and drive all these fancy cars. What you need is someone to say that you can, right? You need a group of people that are going to believe in you. Because hell, if you don't even believe in yourself, who's going to believe in you? And I often tell my clients, I say, if you can't believe in yourself and I'm working with you, I'll believe in you first. And that belief starts the whole chain of progress, of growth, of starting to achieve your life. Failure in its own right doesn't feel good, right? Whether you fail at beating Pac-Man or if you fail on the test, this still leaves a gut-wrenching feeling inside of you. All right, like, oh man, that sucks. And talking about failure... And where you want to be, right? So we're talking about the prize of life. And of course, where you want to be is not going to be without challenges. It's not going to be without mistakes. It's not going to be without hardship. Regardless of that, you have to want what that is, right? The finish line, the winning circle. You want to get there. So it doesn't matter about the hard work. It doesn't matter about failing. It doesn't matter about all the long nights or all the times you're going to need to be alone working on your craft. What matters the most is being relentless and don't stopping until you become successful. So yeah, if you fail in a game, if you fail at life, if you fail in a relationship, Don't hang up the towel and say, well, this is not going to work. This is not working for me. I'm going to give up. And it's happening quite frequently in almost every aspect of our society. Why do you think so many relationships don't work? Why do you think so many people are leaving their jobs? Why do you think people are not going after more? 
because they're afraid to fail. They're afraid to achieve. They're afraid to try. And you have to try. Because in order to get your best life, you have to understand there's going to be work. And you won't be fulfilled if it was given to you. Guarantee you. And this blog talks about that. The prize of life. Doesn't matter about, oh, I won the lotto. I'm a millionaire. Got $500 million. I don't have to work a day in my life. Okay. John comes over. John's like, hey, I heard you won the lotto. Yeah, I did. Hey, John, you were, you know, such a good friend to me. Um, you were there, my breakup, you were there, my dog died. And I want to take care of you, John. I'm going to, I'm going to buy you a car. You're going to do that for me? All right, what car you want? Well, he's going to get the most expensive car. So John gets a Lamborghini, right? So $800,000. So $800,000 later, John has a Lamborghini, right? But John's doing his own thing, right? John's got, you know, clouting all over. Oh, I got a Lamborghini. Oh, I got this. He's John's not saying that you got him that Lamborghini. John's just saying he has a Lamborghini. Well, guess what? You gave John a Lamborghini. Now your brother, your sister, your aunt, your uncle, all your high school friends, all your co-workers, they want Lamborghinis too. You got 500 million. So you're like, well, guess what? I got 500 million. I get everyone a Lamborghini. Get everyone a Lamborghini. Next thing you know, you're getting everyone a house. Getting everyone a house. Mansion. Multi-million dollar mansions. Now, that 500 million went real quick because you forgot about taxes. Right? Uncle Sam said, hey, buddy, where's my money? $250,000 or $250 million. So you only really had $250 million and you're buying all these people. Cars, houses, all the things that they didn't earn, you just gave away because you felt you're in a position to give. Okay, cool. You're a giver. Now, guess what? Money's starting to run low because you're not working. Your money's not working for you. Inflation's hitting. Prices are going up. And your spending has not stopped. Your success was not determined. It was by luck. So if you're going to say, okay, I got lucky and I won the lotto. Cool, right? But where was your goal? What was the next step? And many people don't have that next step in their minds and if they don't have that next step in their minds they're going to go through life haphazardlessly and if they do that they're going to lose everything because they didn't because they didn't earn it so they're going to lose it because they don't know how to maintain it they don't know the level of work needed to get to that level of life and before you know it the majority of lot of windows uh, winners are, guess what? Broke. They have all this money, yet they don't know how to manage it. And I'm not saying you can't win the lotto and, spl- and splurge on yourself, but you can. You have to do it smart. And I'm not even saying go out and buy the lotto ticket. You should actually use that money and invest in yourself. Invest in school. Invest in coaching. Invest in books. Invest in learning. So you can be better. Stack your deck so you can make your future days equipped with the tools needed to build what you want to build in your life. So, Tisk, you have a question? Um, Just put it in chat and I will answer it. So, going back to understanding the prize is your goal. And even if your goal is to win the lotto, when you get there, what's the next step? Right? 
What's the next step when your goal is to be in a relationship and you're in a relationship? What's the next step? Because relationships are a lot of work too. Careers are a lot of work. Businesses are a lot of work. Things are a lot of work. And yes, you can work for a company and get a set schedule, a set job title, job details that need to be completed. And you can say, okay, well, this is good enough for me. This is enough work for me to say, okay, I did something, but not so much where I'm breaking my back. That type of thinking, get it out of your brain. You need to get your hands dirty. You need to be willing to put in the work. And I talked about this on the first episode. On if you think you're working hard right now, I guarantee you, you're not. You can work harder. All right. If you're running and you're and you're on the track and you're like, Whoo, I'm tired. I'm, I got to stop. Do me a favor. Tell yourself I'm not going to stop and I'm going to keep on running. And keep on running until either you fall over or you complete your mileage for the day. Because again, if you're running on the track, you should have set a goal for yourself. See how far you get before you really trap, before you truly stop. Many people stop way before their potential, their cap, their limit. So you got to break that. You have to break that habit, that That idea in your mind saying, you know what? This is good enough. No. You don't stop when you're tired. You stop when you're done. And the prize of life doesn't happen, right? It's not attained by you stopping when you feel like it. It stops when you reach your goal. And even when you reach your goal, you should have already created another goal. My, one of my mentors here in Texas, he was 65, retired, millions of dollars, and he's 65 and he's like, I have another idea, right? He worked his whole life and he's like, I have another idea. And he was about to start a new venture at 65. Age does not matter. Yeah, he worked for a company, a big company, and he made a lot of money. And he retired at 65 like he was supposed to. Actually, he was forced to. He didn't want to retire, but the company forced him to. And then at 65, he's telling me, I'm not done yet. I got another idea. That's how you have to be. Yeah, reach success, reach your goal, but then have more, right? Be as be ambitious until the day you die. And you'll see how much you can achieve. All right, so let's get into Tiska's question. So if everyone is paying his money so fast, like nowadays, credit cards and stuff, money value goes to zero because everyone gets money, pays it, and then the other one pays it fast. So there is no value to money, right? The faster money gets spent, the lower its value goes, right? Either you die or you get fainted. So... The thing about money, right? We could talk about inflation. We could talk about how the dollar, right? Would you use the U.S. dollar? The the U.S. dollar is getting weaker, right? Or a currency might be getting weaker. And there has to, there is a reason why that happens, right? So here in America, the reason our dollar is getting weaker is because we're printing more money. And there's no standard back behind our dollar. So that means more money in circulation means our money is worth less. But when there's less money, our money is worth more. So if you're going to use like credit cards and use your credit or money you don't have, then you're just putting yourself in a hole, right? So it's not so much about getting 
large amounts of money holding on to it. It's not about getting large amounts of money and spending before it depreciates. You should have your money work for you. Your money should be able to fight inflation, fight all the printing problems that we're having currently, and you should be making passive income, right? You should be making money passively. You should have money maybe in the stock market and real estate. Your cash flow should be abundant enough to pay all your bills, to put a certain amount of money into savings, whether that be 15% or 50% or 60%, whatever, whatever you decide. I've heard people say you need to put at least 15%. And I heard people say you need to put up to 60% of your money into savings, right? And when your money's in savings, your money is just not there. It's not there just sitting, doing nothing, right? For, you know, waiting for you to open up the piggy bank and say, all right, come with me. We're going to go on vacation. No, no, no. The money should be utilized into some type of asset. Even if you put the money in a CD, right? Your money should be working for you. So the people who are going out and they're spending money frivolously and they're buying all these cars, they're buying houses they can't afford. Maybe they're buying clothes, designer and before you know it, they have nothing left, right? Bankruptcy is coming in saying, hey, rent's due, mortgage's due, credit card bills are due. Where's my money? Stewie Griffin, where's my money? So if you're going to put yourself in a predicament like that, you have to start to begin to ask yourself, what was the purpose of you doing what you did what was the purpose of you buying a house you couldn't afford maybe it was to invest and it was a bad deal and you learn your lesson right failure is the greatest lesson you can learn or learn from right i have failed countless times right but i'm not afraid to fail anymore if i fail tomorrow if i fail heck if i fail today good what did I, you know, what can I learn from that failure? What can I learn in order to be better? So that's, that's the whole premise of talking about how money comes, money goes, right? You shouldn't be a slave to money. It should be the other way around. Money should be working for you. So it's not about buying mom and dad, this and that, buying your friends, this and that, getting this so you can show the word you you have this and that. It should be exactly what you want, right? It should be exactly what is going to create a long-term generational wealth. And a lot of people forget. That's why you see so many young athletes have all these millions of dollars and they blow it. They don't realize about taxes. School system don't, you know, doesn't teach you about taxes. But then as soon as you get your first check and you're thinking you made $500 and you get your check and you only made 379 and 23 cents, you think you got robbed. You, you know, you're going into accounting and you say, what's going on? Why is my check this much? I should be getting $500. And you're adamant. This is wrong. I should be getting more. I should be getting what is right for me. So if you're going to be thinking for a second that you're deserved every penny and that Uncle Sam's not going to take something from you, at least here in America, you're wrong. And that's a lesson you have to learn. So a lot of people fail there too. So does failure in making friends makes you successful. So I know what you're trying to say. So if I'm, if I don't make friends, I don't have to worry about them stealing from me. 
I don't have to worry about me having to take care of them. I don't have to worry about me feeling obligated to give back to my friends. And that's not true, right? What have they done in your life? What have they done to benefit you? How have they been there to help you grow, to help you succeed? And one of the best examples that we tell young children is the story of the grasshopper and the ants. The grasshopper is playing around and fooling around. It's summer and he's telling the ants, why are you working so hard? It's summer. Let's play. There's plenty of food around. He's eating all these apples and the fruits from the crops. And he has a, he doesn't have a care in the world. He's enjoying his time. And he's like, ants, why are you working so hard? So the ants are working really hard because they're telling the grasshoppers like, hey, we understand it's summer and you want to have a good time. But guess what? Winter's coming. Game of Thrones. Winter's coming. And if you want to survive winter, you have to put in work in the summer. How, how much longer is winter compared to summer? Now, if you're living in a northern state, it's a lot longer, right? You have, you have more cold. You have more of a cold season than you do of a hot season. And so the grasshopper is enjoying this hot season, this summertime. And he's not worried about the winter, the fall. He's worried about making sure he's happy right now. Immediate gratification. And only until winter comes, he realizes there are no food. And the ants take pity on the grasshopper saying, all right, buddy, come on in. We'll take care of you. They have a party in the winter. They got plenty of food to go around. Grasshopper is like, wow. This, so that so that was the work you were doing. And then summer or spring comes around. And the grasshopper is like, I'm not going to make the same mistake again. So now the grasshopper is helping the ants. He's helping them work for the winter. So when we're talking about our friends and we're talking about how we have friends who are just there by the wayside, friends who think that they're owed something because they're your friend. Maybe you've known them for 20 years, right? How have they made your life any better? Start asking yourself that question. What type of person is your friend? Do they lift you up or do they drag you down? After you hang out with them, how do you feel? Are you energetic? Are you drained? Are you ambitious? Are you hopeful? Are you inspired? Delighted? Or maybe you're negative. Maybe you took a turn for the worse and you're a little bit more pessimistic. Maybe you said, you know what? They said, I'm not good at this, so I must not be good at that. You're a follower at that point. They say, we're going out and you're coming. I mean, even though you might have other plans, you, reluctantly, you say, okay, I'll go out. And you go out. But you accomplish nothing. You don't feel any different. Maybe you feel worse. So are they really your friends? So do friends... So does not having friends make you successful? I believe as a species, as humans, we have a need for one another. Think of when you go to the grocery store. Did you grow those foods at the grocery store? No, someone did. You didn't. Now, I'm not saying you can't be Farmer Joe or Farmer Jane and have your own crops and have a little farm stall where you sell your excess good and you pickle your veggies and have food for the winter. I'm not saying you can't do that. But the majority of people don't. The majority of people rely on supermarkets to be in constant circulation of produce, of food, 
year round. And you trade money to get the goods. So you trade your time to get money for your money to give you food. So it doesn't matter about if you have friends or not. What matters is who you're hanging out with. Because if you're hanging around the wrong people, I guarantee you, they're not going to bring you to the place you want to be. Denzel Washington says this is the best. And I know it was down the road where he said after someone else. But he says, if you hang around nine broke people, you're going to be the 10th. You hang around nine rich people, you're going to be a 10th. Right? So, yeah, you can hang around wonderful friends. And then when you're successful, they may, you know, they might leech off you. Now, if you know this person has a good heart, they're ambitious and they're still working on their goals and they're and and they want to be something more than what they are right now, and you decide to help them become better, that's fine, right? That's a choice. But before you did that, I want you to notice something. Your cup should be overflowing at that point. You should be in abundance because if you're in abundance, you're not worried about giving something away. What happens when people believe they're in abundance is they give and give and give before and they are left with nothing. So, yes, you can give to friends. Yes, you can give to family, but you have to have a goal nonetheless. You have to have a reason why you're doing it. And think of it this way. If you give the money, do you want that money back or is that money a gift? And if that money is a gift, meaning you're not going to want it back, what are they going to do with that money? Why do you think there's a story of a king who went away and he gave Three of his, um, they're not servants, but they are, um, they were like um, overseers of the comp- uh, uh, of his kingdom, right? So he gave all, all of these serfs or, or let's call them um, kingdoms. Let's call them kingdoms for ease, for ease. He gives all these kingdoms a certain amount of money, right? And the person ruling the kingdom has a choice to use the money and to make it grow, to hide the money away or to waste the money away, right? We had two kingdoms that used the money and they grew the money. Then there's the third kingdom who hid the money away. So when the king returned, he can give the king back all the money. The king killed the um, person. Why? The king got all his money back. Right? Every penny. But the king didn't want every penny back. He wanted more. It wasn't necessarily that he was greedy. It was, it was a point to be made that money is not going to stay the same. Whether you hide it under your mattress, under a rock, or in your bank. It's not going to be the same when you put it in and then you take it out in a few years. It's not. And King understood that. So, even though he got the same amount of coins he gave the kingdom, he was not satisfied. And neither should you. If you give someone money, right, if you're helping someone or a friend or if you're successful and you're helping on a friend, if they're not able to grow and multiply what you give them, they're wasting their money. They're wasting their funds away. And yeah, there might be circumstances where maybe their business startup, they failed and, and they are just going through it. But at some, at some point, you have to understand all right, my, you know, my wallet is closed. So you're not there constantly giving people money for no reason, right? So 
back to Siska. She's got a few more questions. So, okay, now we know the price of life. What about the price? I think most people work as consumers. If they had a title, if they had a title, would be consumer. And I think that is always companies wants us to be. So yes, companies want us to be consumers, right? Companies want us to buy what they're selling because when we buy what they're selling, the company makes money. There, there was a saying, especially during the pandemic, right? The quarantine, the lockdown here in the West, in America, that every time you buy from Amazon, you're making someone passive income, right? You're giving someone passive income. And almost as that, like, if that's a bad thing, right? Like, don't don't shop on Amazon. You're making Amazon more money. You should go to a mom and pop's place and help support them. And I understand that. But the idea of not wanting to support Amazon because we give someone else passive income. That is scarcity, Right? I'm not going to give you passive income because I don't have passive income. Why are you not selling on Amazon? Why are you not creating something and then selling it and people are being consumers and buying it? What was stopping you from doing that? That's like the million dollar question. What was stopping you from doing it? How many times have you heard someone say, Oh, I thought about that. Or, oh, I could have thought about that. Frequently. Because it happens all the time. People realize that, oh, I could have done that too late. Because it's already done. Why would you not act on your thought? And it goes back to planning. It goes back to having goals. It goes back to being ambitious. A lot of people dream of having a good life, but they're not willing to put in the work to have a good life. So, all in all, the prize of life is talking about figuring out what would you like to be waiting for you at the end of life. A book with all your accomplishments inside of it. All the great things you have done. All the great things that will supersede your death. That is what you should be looking at. I'm not saying you should be looking at death and saying, Oh my God, I only have 52 years left before I die. Have a goal. Achieve it. Make another goal. Achieve it. Don't settle for the poor man's dream. Working a nine to five and then realizing that this is not really what you wanted for your life. Do not settle for not being ambitious because someone was afraid to put in the work or be ambitious themselves. Just because someone has limits doesn't mean those limits apply to you. But frequently, how many times do we allow those limits to apply to us? Constantly. Every day. Almost all the new clients I have, they have some type of obstacle, some type of block. That's stopping them. Whether they don't know, they were told that they couldn't, or they're afraid. All of those three things are enough to stop you dead in your tracks and not achieve anything more than what you have right now. Because sometimes failure hurts more than not trying. For the short term, but for the long term, it's going to hurt a lot more. So don't let your dreams 
your most ambitious dreams hide away. Don't let your most ambitious dreams die with you. Fulfill them. Be the champion you are supposed to be. And if you're having a hard time understanding your worth, I have plenty of content, plenty of videos. And if you're at the level where you can afford personal coaching, seek it. So you can start to fill in all the holes in your life. So you can start to get rid of all the things and all the thoughts that do not serve you. And start to only precisely put the pieces to your empire exactly where they need to be placed. And it's done with hard work, consistency, massive action, and a plan. So the prize of life is your plan, is your dream. So don't allow your dreams to become one of the many dreams that are unfulfilled every day, every year, every life. So... Last question from Tuska, and then I'm going to be just doing a little bit closing. So, and I think that is why the companies wanted. So, so basically that was the same question. All right. So Tuska, you have any more questions? Let me know them for here. Want to briefly talk about all of my wonderful areas where you can get content. So I do have a discord channel. It's just started. So it's going to be fairly new. But on that Discord channel, going to be having discussions similar to what we would be having in chat, right? Where people can put an input, whether you have a dream, if you have a goal, and you might just want some feedback, right? You might say, is this a good idea? Or I'm thinking about doing this. What do you think? Feel free to do that, right? If you're having any type of problems, whether it be relationship, money, um, career, it could be anything. So if you have questions there, someone will be able to answer it. All right. I typically can always point point you in the right direction. I don't have experience with everything, of course, but working with the amount of people I've worked with in my life, I do have a good understanding of what you may need. So also follow me on Instagram. There's my link. I post motivational pictures, some, a little bit of my life, and you can find all the motivation you may need in a given day. So if you're down and out and you need some quick motivation, my Instagram page is the way to go. Now, if you're on my Facebook, make sure to like and follow Revan Concepts, and you can see my blog post. You can see Instagram post. You can see any comments or stories I share. And from there, it's going to be motivational, right? So all the, all of my social media websites are focused on motivation and on progress. Except my, tw- except my Twitter. My Twitter is the only political avenue that I like to use. Where I might say something political And you can disagree or not disagree, but that is where I kind of vent my political gripes with the world. And I talk, I talk a little bit about that on the video where I'm saying people should want more. They should not settle for less. That type of mentality, that type of political outlook. All right. Of course, I, uh, of course I stream live. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on on these three platforms, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Make sure to subscribe, follow, and to hit the alert icon when I'm about to go live so you can stay in the mix with everything. Mondays, I will be addressing the blog along with your questions, always. Wednesdays is going to be 
motivational hump day day. So it's going to be we can do it Wednesdays because of hump day and helping people get through their week. So we're going to be talking about motivation, tips and tricks for how to stay motivated and to be able to get through the week more readily. And on Fridays, we're actually going to start getting some guest speakers, right? Some will be clients, some will be people who are looking for coaching, and we're going to be working with them live on air, right? So we're going to be going through someone's problems live on air. Some might not do video because of privacy reasons, but I will always do video. And from there, we will be talking to other coaches. We will be talking to other content creators, whether it be their struggles, their successes, etc. And we're going to be focused on different people, different areas, but the but the one thing I want to learn from them is why are you doing what you're doing, right? What is making you ambitious? Why do you want to change? Why are you saying the same? To get down to their core being. Because I want to prove a point. Friday should be proving a point day. How many people are taking the scraps life is giving them? How many people are settling for less? Because if you're one of those people who are settling for less, that's fine. But if you are going to complain about it, you have no right. You need to be putting in the work if you want to complain. And even the people who are putting in the work are not complaining because they're too busy working. If you find yourself having time to complain, you're not working hard enough. That's the way I see it. You can disagree or not. If you have time to complain, you have time to worry, you're not doing what needs to be done. Just think of someone who is in the process of, let's say, a sports game, right? Are they going to spend their whole... You know, are are they going to spend the whole game worrying about if they lose? Are they going to be spending the whole entire time thinking, "Oh, well, if I got a fumble, guess what? When it's time for the ball to come to you, or the ball comes your way and you fumble it, you did that. Your mind did that. So put your mind in the right place to answer the call. To answer the summon of the task at hand. So don't worry about what could happen. Worry about what will happen. Talk about the good. Talk about the success. Surround your people who talk about the good. Who talk about the success. Who have goals and ambitions. And pay attention to if people are going to be negative, if they're going to be hurt, if they're going to try to bring you down because they're down, those people you toss into the river quicker than a rock that can skip. You don't need them. Because the prize waiting for you at the end, that should be where your focus is. And if people want to come along with you, Along, along with you on that journey and help you and be there when you need assistance, remember that. And you can give back in dividends when you're able to. Because if you are living in abundance, your cup is overflowing, everyone who's around you should have already been vetted. Everyone around you should have been identified as someone valuable in an asset. Because if they're not an asset, they're a liability. And if they're a liability, they should hold no place in your life. 
It's not your job to be carrying people around the world. I don't even carry people around the world. I tell my clients, either you want it or you don't. Because at the end of the day, I can't force you to do anything. I can tell you exactly what you need to do. And if you do it, great. Let's get it. But if you don't, don't complain to me saying your life is not what you want it to be. And you're not willing to put into work. Remember, you don't get what you want. You get what you deserve. And the prizes, there's no participation trophy in life. The people who earn a prize earned it. And if you're not one of those people, move over so the next person can go go up the stage and get their prize. You're not going to be able to stop people who have their minds on the prize. Because if someone's hungry enough and ambitious enough, they're going to go get exactly what it is they want. All right? So, all in all, the prize of life, go out and get it. Go out and find it. 